And now we're going to go into the Peregrine Falcon. The Peregrine Falcon is one of the most uh, iconic and famous species of all falcons. They have a worldwide distribution. They live basically everywhere except Antarctica, so they're very adaptable. Um, in Utah, we have three subspecies. And uh, they're kind of the poster child of conservation. Uh, they were endangered in the United States. They were taken off the endangered species list in August of 1999. Falconers and uh, conservationists and breeders uh, helped to bring them back from the brink of extinction in the United States. But in other parts of the world, their populations were doing fine at the same time. Um, how fast are they really? Uh, I've heard a wide range from 100 miles an hour to 300 miles an hour. Um, they're generally considered to be the fastest animal on earth but I think the jury's still out on a definitive speed everybody's always trying to uh, figure that out for sure now there's there's three subspecies here in the United States uh, the first is the tundra peregrine these are smaller and lighter than any of the others this is uh, this is an adult because he's very wide on the chest this is an anatom peregrine which is uh, what we, it, what would be more of a central, like, what we should have here in Utah. I'll tell you, there's a problem with that in a second, but this is what we should have here in the Intermountain West. Uh, a redder chest, and then there's sort of red and blue on the flanks, and the horizontal bars as an adult are, are pretty narrow. Uh, you can see that red chest there, and then those, those narrow bars. Uh, and then this is the Peel's Peregrine which again is normally thought of as being as more of a Pacific coastal peregrine. They're considered to be the biggest and uh, have those really thick horizontal bars right there. So uh, some problems with that. Uh, Inter-subspecies hybridization. When, uh, when conservationists were really worried about the peregrine going extinct in the United States, a lot of the breeding birds utilized to uh, boost their numbers uh, that were bred in captivity, they, they weren't paying any attention to subspecies um, purity. It was just, hey, look, if it's a peregrine, it's a peregrine. Let's breed them. Let's get the babies back out into the wild. Um, there, was, there was some of that that went on. So a lot of the ones that went out were inter-subspecies hybridized. Um, there was also interspecies hybridization going on. So when peregrine numbers plummeted in the wild, they did uh, interbreed with prairie falcons. This is a prairie falcon from the wild that was trapped because they didn't want it breeding with more peregrines and it was kept in captivity to zoo. So um, let me, let's go over some peregrine basics. Let's take a look at these two. These are two, this is brother and sister. And this is saber and tiger. They are captive bred peregrines that were used in falconry. They have the same parents, but they are half Peel's peregrine, half an autumn peregrine. So Tiger, this is what he looked like his first year. Uh, he had a thick malar stripe. He had a dark brown back and a light brown chest with dark streaks. And uh, check it out, his feet were yellow. Um, they should be blue their first year, but he happened to have yellow feet even as a young bird, which is uh, sort of a rule breaker there. And then once he became an adult, his back and tail were very blue, very strikingly blue. So here's what he looked like in front as an adult. His malar stripe got thicker, his chest turned red, and he pretty much looked just like an anatom peregrine. Um, but he was part peels, part anatom. Here's his sister, Saber, as a first-year bird. Her back was almost entirely black. And here she is as an adult. And you can see her malar stripe was so thick that it was almost a cap. And uh, her back and wings have only a hint of blue. They stayed almost black. So she, she looked almost like a pure Peels. So even knowing that they were siblings and had the same parents, uh, that my, my point is that you can never be sure of what mix of subspecies an individual has in it when you're in North America. This is the end of part five of this uh, PowerPoint. Feel free to check out part six to see the rest of the presentation.